So what we've got here is a terribly drawn dot and cross diagram of a methane molecule um, where we can see we have the central carbon and the four hydrogens bonded to that, each one connected by this these two electrons here, the shared pair of electrons, obviously that being our covalent bond. Um, in reality, obviously, we would normally see methane written out as CH4, or actually as the word methane. So this, this diagram does its job. It shows us the electrons, and there's nothing wrong with it as far as a dot and cross diagram to show the covalent bonding goes. However, this isn't a really true representation of of what methane would look like because this assumes these electrons well, number one the whole thing is just within within one plane it's it's flat on your screen and these electrons are just sort of here sat in these in these positions um, in reality we might find that methane looks something like this so we can see now this is this is this is a much different looking molecule what we can see the resemblance is here in the center we would have our our carbon atom somewhere around here and we have our hydrogen 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 and hydrogen so we still have that ch4 molecular formula but it's expressed in a different way and actually this is a more true to life representation of what the molecule would actually look like and the reason for that is is these things here rather than thinking about the electrons as just a static pair we can think about these these terms here these electron clouds um, and what these are these are areas that it's more probable to to find the electrons so it's not a definite but it's a more probable area um, and the second thing we find is actually that that due to these electrons or these areas of of, electro, of electron inhabitants um, we have a repulsion and that repulsion leads to the molecule spreading out to so that the bonding electrons are as far away from each other as they can be. And that's actually, if you were to look at it, this is the furthest away they could be. This isn't on a, on a, on a two-dimensional uh, plane here, on, well, on the single dimension really, it's just this flat surface. We can see they are as spread out as they could be. In reality though, in the three-dimensional world, they must exhibit this, this three-dimensional structure. Now, of course, it's not just methane that exhibits this three-dimensional this three-dimensional shape. Um, all molecules do, and in terms of the the specification, the AQAS chemistry specification within Unit One within the bonding section, there are a few different what's classed as coordination numbers that you need to know. Uh, and we're going to have a quick look at those now, and the shapes, of course, that that are actually made from them. Okay, so this this table really gives you sort of most information you will need with regard to actually the AS specification and those shapes that you actually need to know about. Um, the left hand column here, the one that's already filled in from 2 through to 6, is this term coordination number. Now probably a term you've not come across before but really coordination number is talking about how many bonds are really made to the central atom or how many bonding pairs we have. So we could just think about it as bonds made, um, say bonding pairs oh, and that's of electrons there. Now as the number changes so does the shape, so does the bond angle and so does the diagram um, that would represent it as up with the methane. We have similar looking diagrams for here as well. Um, so our first one, if we have a coordination number of two within a 3D world, the furthest away or the, the, the way this works is that if we were to imagine something like carbon dioxide. So a diagram for carbon dioxide it would exist as this linear shape and the reason being that this here is the furthest away they can get from each other in terms of the bonding electrons so angle here 180 degrees I'll fit it into the correct space 180 degrees a completely linear structure they're all in one plane when we look to three we actually find a similar scenario um, an example being boron trifluoride so BF three and what this would exhibit what this look like is again a single planar molecule where we have essentially have a flat triangle in appearance so this bond angle here 120 degrees and from here we would say that it is trigonal planar so essentially a triangle within this single plane four this is now where we're looking towards the idea of of methane um, being the classic example, so CH4, um, and we can see here just to 
bring back this coordination number, the two bonds here, the three bonds made here, and in the case of the methane, the four. Now what we get here is a tetrahedral tetrahedral shape. And to draw this, I'm actually going to move it out this way slightly. Um, it, it's a little bit big, actually. I'll see if I can fit it in here. So, we have two portions that are within the same plane, but it's of course three-dimensional, so we add in some different shapes here. So we have a triangular bond drawn in, um, connecting to the hydrogen here, and we have these dashed lines which connect to another hydrogen. Now what this is implying is that in the case of the, the carbon here, these two hydrogens are in the same plane, and that could be the plane of your screen. This hydrogen, however, is coming out of the screen towards you, and this hydrogen is actually going into the screen away from you. And that actually represents now the 3D nature of the methane molecule. Bond angles, funny ones in this one. We have the same bond angle no matter what way around you would going to turn this. It's a symmetrical molecule entirely. And the bond angles are 109.5 degrees. So uh, a slightly more difficult one to remember, but again, a molecule of this sort will always have these bonds, provided there's no sort of extra lone pairs or anything, which we'll talk about in a moment. Looking for a coordination number of five. Classic example here phosphorus pentachloride. Now we're supposed to draw this one out here. This actually combines, it certainly touches on this idea here where our phosphorus um, in the middle here we would find we have, try and draw this reasonably well, so we have three chlorines here, that's not drawn well at all, which would exist, so from above if you were to look down on this molecule, the phosphorus would have that kind of setup, similar to the trigonal planar, but then with that being in the same plane, we have a chlorine at the top and a chlorine at the bottom. So we have a slightly different shape here, and what we actually have is a trigonal bipyramid. So if you imagine the pyramid at the top and one at the bottom, so a trigonal bipyramid. Um, that's obviously the shape that we'll be drawing here. So trigonal, same within the that point there, but a bipyramid. So trigonal bipyramid. Now there's two different bonds here. Um, this portion, the middle section, we have bonds of 120 degrees. But at this point here, actually from looking at it from the side, phosphorus and chlorine would be in that sense, we'd have our three within that single plane. So we have a right angle there. So we have a 90 degree section and a 120 degree section. So obviously it's important to know that's the 120 degree and that's the 90 degree present. The final one, and um, the shape here is octahedral, and we have a coordination number of six, so six things bonded to our central atom. And this one's actually easy because the bond angle is just 90 degrees in this case. Um, and actually to draw this, just get rid of some of this first. Obviously if you need to copy those back down then just rewind and, and go back to those. So we have the octahedral shape then. Um, and the molecule here we could have would be sulfur hexafluoride, in which case we have the central sulfur atom, we have a fluorine above and below, so it's similar um, to the coordination number of five, the trigonal bipyramid, but it's slightly easier in many ways. Uh, and what we find is, I'm trying to think of the best way to draw this now, we would have So this portion here where we have actually a square within the centre and these two fluorines um, above and below. So if we look, from it, uh, look at it from above, we would have sulphur with fluorine like that. But obviously from the side we have these fluorines above and below as well. And that's why we have our 90 degrees at every point. So between there and there, 90 between 20 and there, we also have the 90 degrees. So these are the basic shapes that you're expected to know. And you're expected to know the names of them and the bond angles present, and also to be able to draw them from named molecules. Now there are, well, there's, there are a couple of exceptions here, and that is if we have lone pairs of electrons present. Uh, and the reason there's an exception there is because lone pairs actually cause further repulsion. Remember we said that the reason these shapes exist is because the repulsion between the bonding pairs of electrons pushing them out to as far as they can be. Now actually what we find is lone pairs will actually repulse, repel more than the bonding electrons will. So if we scroll down here, 
A couple of examples, a couple of classic ones would be um, ammonia and water. So if we look at ammonia and we have a look at water. Now in the case of ammonia, we have an ammonia molecule and we might think, well, boron tetrafluoride, I'm going to draw it exactly as before with that, that and that. But actually that doesn't take into account the lone pair of electrons that we have present. So get rid of that. What we actually find then is that we have this set up. Let's get rid of that as well. We have a nitrogen with three hydrogens and then we have this lone pair here which is often drawn like a strange ghost. Um, but with the two lone pairs there, they could just be drawn as two dots. Make that clear in an exam or they could just be drawn as this, this electron cloud. Um, so what we have then is we have the nitrogen, we have these um, bonding pairs here. And the way to think about with both of these, these lone pair examples is imagine you're starting with a tetrahedral molecule and one, in this case, the other hydrogen, say, has been replaced with a lone pair. And that's how you would work out the bond angles here. So within a tetrahedral molecule like um, the methane, we had bond angles of 109.5 degrees. Now each lone pair, this being obviously one of the lone pairs there, constricts by around two and a half degrees. That means this bond angle is going to be 107 degrees, which is obviously two and a half lower than in this first original tetrahedral shape. To go over here, water, we have a central um, oxygen, again with two lone pairs this time, and if we look at the oxygen molecule we'll see that, and I will show you in a minute how we can work this out, uh, and it, the two hydrogens bonded, and in here we have a bond angle of 104. 0.5 degrees and that's because of the fact that we now have one extra lone pair which has constricted it that two and a half degrees more so ammonia being the classic one here with the one lone pair water having two and therefore the effect of the uh, angles here and that, again just to repeat that is because the lone pairs of electrons repulse the bonding electrons more than they do in terms of actually giving uh, worded names to these then um, we would find that this one uh, we're going to call this a trigonal pyramid uh, and over here something like the water molecule H2O uh, we're going to call this um, bent linear or we might call it v-shaped Okay, so the next step and the final step is to have a look actually at, if we were given a molecular formula, how we would work out the shape that it is. Right, so we get to the exam and we're given a question like this. What is the shape of the NH3 molecule, the ammonia molecule? Now, there are a set of rules, there are five steps to follow, which no matter what the molecule is, you will always be able to work out the shape based on the table that we used um, previously uh, with the coordination numbers going from 2 to 6. So the five steps, and we're going to apply this to the ammonia molecule which we've already looked at but we'll just pretend we have done what it's going to look like. So the five steps. Um, one, count the number of the outer shell electrons of the central atom. So of the central atom. Now to know which one's going to be the central atom it's going to be the one that is just one. So if you imagine all the shapes, so if we just go back quickly to this here, you'll see that no matter what the shape is, there's always a central point, there's always a central atom which they all then go from. So it's that one, it's that atom within the molecular formula that is on its own. In this case obviously we've got nitrogen. Um, in terms of looking at the outer shell electron number, think of it in the in the simple way sort of more of a GCSE thinking of the Bohr model where we have the 2882 etc um, and the other way the simple way to actually work that out is to look at what group they're in and the group that an element is in is the number of outer shell electrons so nitrogen is in group 5 therefore we have 5 outer shell electrons the second step for this is add to this number so we're always going to be adding numbers together and then doing a bit of a division Add to this number the number of electrons that each of the bonding atoms brings. Now, we know that hydrogen has one outer shell electron, 
um, and when it forms covalent bonds it obviously brings that one into the covalent bond therefore in this case um, so electrons that bonding atoms bring we know that each hydrogen is going to bring one but we have three hydrogens so we're going to get three and we're going to add that to the five and that gives us eight at this point so step three we're going to add or remove any electrons for charges or for ions really that we're dealing with this isn't charged it's just a normal um, non-charged molecule so we actually can ignore this step and we're still sitting at eight there step four and there's five in total so step four we're going to divide the number that we have at this point by two and this will give us the number of electron pairs so divide by two and that's obviously going to be eight divided by two it's going to give us four so that's the point we're looking at here we know we have four electron pairs within this molecule now the final step look at the molecule and that might seem um, fairly sort of strange just to look at it but actually if we see nitrogen with three hydrogens bonded well each of these nitrogen hydrogen bonds is going to use one of these electron pairs well, that means we have one left over therefore that one left over must be a lone pair so we know we have three bonding pairs and we have one lone pair and when we think back to this shape over here uh, we will actually then see one lone pair three bonding pairs and again then we've just got to remember these shapes and trigonal pyramid and obviously the bond angles of 107 degrees there as well okay so now there's one for you to try try and work out the shape of the BF4 minus ion right so if you follow the steps again and without writing them all down this time we're just actually looking at what the numbers are going to be at each point first boron is our central atom how many electrons does boron have in its outer shell it has three okay we're going to add this add to this the number of electrons that are brought by each bonding um, each bonding atom in this case we've got four times one obviously we add that to the three so our number at this point is seven we have a negative charge overall so we're going to add one and that's going to take us to eight we divide by two and that gives us four bonding or four electron pairs we look at this oh well, brilliant this time we know that we have four bonding atoms therefore the shape is going to be tetrahedral but slightly different because we have this overall negative charge there and there you have it shapes of molecules